What happens if the captive owner doesn't want to make premium payments for one or two years? Uh, I think I can take that one. We, we have certainly a large stable of clients and they're at the whim of the economy and their particular industry at times. So there are external circumstances um, in which they decide they don't want to buy these policies when they're captive and thus not write any premiums. Um, so, so there's some embedded flexibility when you have your captive set up. Um, there's certainly um, an ability to taper down the type of policies that you want to buy from your captive. So oftentimes at renewal, there's a discussion about budget and discussion about the, you know, what's going on with the business. And maybe they decide to pick up a handful of policies at renewal to reduce the premiums um, that fits their business purpose. Um, it, there are examples of clients who decide they don't want to fund anything. And in those instances, um, there's a, an ability for us to um, take the captive into dormancy. So what that means is we go back to the regulators and we essentially tell them that there's no um, you know, significant tail risk to be concerned about. And we are going to be taking this captive and, and essentially putting it on the shelf. Um, all of the requirements that they have um, to, for, for an active insurance company essentially drop to, to near zero. So the, um, you know, the actuarials and, and, and things of that nature uh, that creates expense and fee and work, um, that goes away. And, and really so does our work as managers. It drops down precipitously. So for the folks that decide that they want to take a captive to dormancy, they can maintain the captive um, with a de minimis amount of, of uh, ongoing expense. And then as they make a decision to, sit, to essentially pull it off the shelf, then everything can get fired up as, um, as they were before. So similar to the traditional marketplace where the property casualty is based on your revenue, the same thing is true with a captive. So when it gets underwritten by the actuary, they figure out what is what is the revenue and the higher the revenue, the higher the chance of loss and the, the premiums go up. But the same thing happens in reverse. And then we do have clients, This every single year we do an actuarial study. So we look at what is the internal cost for the client to keep that risk themselves. But there are some, some sometimes in the marketplace where carriers would decide, make a business decision to buy risk and, and take clients over. And whenever a client, if, if they can buy insurance cheaper in the traditional market than their internal carrying cost, then that's where we say, hey, just go buy it in the traditional market. And that's happened sometimes with medical insurance and general liability where business, where insurance companies just decide they, they want to start buying business. So they'll charge clients less than they really should. That only usually happens and lasts for a year or two because eventually the insurance companies, you know, they, they wise up and then they say, okay, well, you know, we need to start charging you. And then the clients, because they have their captive and they may have been writing 10 policies before and because the pricing in the marketplace, three of those policies, they just laid off to a Blue Cross or United or Cigna or whoever. And that since they have their captive, they have the ability to just start writing those premiums again when the market flips. 